Thank you so much for joining me on the Quiet Rebellion podcast. And I am super excited today to have with me my friend, Catherine Maguire. And we're going to talk about the Quiet Rebellion and all the stuff that Catherine gets up to, which is fantastic and amazing. And you're going to find out so, so much more. So welcome. Thank you for agreeing to be on my podcast, Catherine. Oh, it's so lovely to be here. It's kind of a miracle. I'm not a major technology person, but I'm on a mountain in Italy. So it's kind of a miracle. Thank you, technology. <laughs> So um, let's start off by talking about a quiet rebellion. What does ordinary mean to you as well? Because it's a quiet rebellion against the ordinary. Oh, this is such a great topic. <laughs> I, I think for me, when I was thinking about this, when you said to me about this podcast, ordinary, and not in a, not in a pejorative way, but ordinary for me is an aspect of consensus reality where we don't really step out beyond the ordinary. So it's kind of, we're in that consensus reality of not a lot of fizz, not a lot of juice, just kind of going along in the motion, doing thing. Um, but it's quite subdued. It's quite subdued. And I know this because I tried to be ordinary for a long time. And how did that go? <laughs> well, you know, there was a breakdown. I can tell you that. <laughs> there was a breakdown. I went broke and kind of pretty much lost my mind. And it didn't really work out that well. And so the ordinary, as much as I tried to fit into that ordinary box, wasn't, yeah, wasn't one of my better ideas, I'd have to say. <laughs> Why did you feel that you had to have an ordinary existence? Oh, good question. I think because I didn't know any better. And I think that's kind of what you're told. No, I don't mean you're told, but... It's what you're kind of expected to do. So, you know, I went to school. I remember in school, the careers teacher said to me, what do you want to be? And I was like, I have no clue, really. Like, I was a farm girl. I would have been quite happy to stay on the farm. That's just the truth of it. But I'm the eldest of six. My brother, that's the third, is the eldest boy. So it was kind of the unspoken thing was that, like, he'd take over the farm. Um, I think if it was different. I probably would have gone into farming, maybe. So I went to college. What do you want to do in college? Oh, I don't know. What do I like? I like cooking and I like television. <laughs> so I didn't want to do cooking and catering. I didn't want to do that. So I went and I studied television of all things and got a job in it and got a boyfriend and got a husband and got a house and a mortgage and a car and thought that's what you were supposed to do because that's what grown up people did and that's what was supposed to make you happy. And it didn't. No. But it did a bit. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it did a bit but you know I didn't I was married to a lovely man um you know we had a nice house we had a nice life we had a really nice life you know we traveled a lot but just that thing inside like there has to be more to it this it's like you know you get to point and go okay I did things I was supposed to do and now that I'm here but I don't feel fulfilled I don't feel like this is the whole of me that I can be in the world so and it was really stressful. Like, it was really stressful. That's where the breakdown came out of. Like, you know, my body got sick. I was doing mad errands in a job that I really didn't love. Um, so, yeah, so there was gorgeous moments in it. And it afforded me, you know, a house, a car, a lifestyle. But it didn't, it didn't fill my soul. It didn't fill my heart. You know, it didn't. It, and it didn't, it didn't care for my body because my body got sick. So I think that's a really good indicator for me. You know, if I'm not in alignment, my body starts to give me indications that something's not working. Do you think that's a good indication for lots of people who find themselves sick, even though they shouldn't be because maybe they're doing all the right things, that maybe that their soul is nudging them via their body to look at their life in more detail? I have a philosophy. Do you? <laughs> maybe not everyone agrees with, but my philosophy is the universe plays dirty. <laughs> So that's my philosophy. So we can be as I'm I'm a Torian, I'm an Irish farm girl, I'm as stubborn as they come. I can honestly put my hand up and say that. But so I know how to like bull ahead quite literally, and I'm you know, I'm physically strong, so I can use my physical strength to keep pushing ahead. But yeah, for me, my body when it's not working, it'll give me some indication. And I think depending on who you are and how you're wired. The universe will play dirty, so either it'll take the job away, or it'll take your health away, or it'll take the person that you think you're madly in love with and going to spend the rest of your life with away, or something, you know, take all your cash away or whatever. 
um, and then go, okay, now that I have your attention, could we possibly have a conversation? Because I think sometimes we take need those moments, those kind of, you know, car crash moments to go, oh, okay, that's not working. And have you found also that if the universe begins to play dirty and take one thing away and you ignore it, then all of a sudden it's taken everything away. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me, you know, when I had my breakdown. Oh, like, and that's going back 20 years now. But, you know, it was little indications first. Little things started happening with my body, which is really strange because I'm naturally very strong. I, I, you know, I grew up on a farm. I grew up in fresh air. You know, we grew, ate my dad's veg. So I have a good, strong constitution. So for my body to start, you know, having some problems was a, was a kind of an it. But I just ignored them. I totally ignored them. I just kept pulling out. You know, I'm stronger than this. Well, who? Do you know what I'll do? I'll go to the gym more and train more, so I'm stronger. <laughs> and that's what I did, you know. And then it was like the health went. And then my mind started to go. It was like I just couldn't keep it together. And then my emotions started kind of exploding all over the place, you know. So, And so in fairness to me, I took some heads up. I left my job before the job left me. But... Yeah, I think that's what happens. We get, we, it kind of nudges at you. And then if you don't listen to the nudge, it's a shove. And if you don't go with the shove, it's a kick in the butt. And then that's quite it. So, in my opinion. <laughs> so how did you get from your ordinary, which didn't, the container was too tight for you. So you had to explode out of that ordinary to where you are now, which is on the top of a mountain in Italy, doing something completely different from television. <laughs> So what was that journey? Can I just say, I love that. I love that analogy that the container's too tight. I love that. That's <laughs> really, no, it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. So what happened? So when I had my breakdown, I quit my job. Well, I quit my job in that process. And I, I took to bed, quite honestly. I didn't actually understand what was going on. And then I had a friend, a very wise friend, who kind of set me on the road of healing and um, went and did some therapy, went to some counseling sessions. And I went and I just saw different healers. One of them being a woman, an Irish woman called Carmen Robb, who is an intuitive and a reader. And my friend said to me, if I bring you to see this woman, will you come and see her? I think she might be able to help you. And I was like, I'll go anywhere if I can understand what's going on in my head. So I went to see her and I was still like in my just, just out of post TV days and I went along to her all suited and booted in my pencil skirt and you know all like crisp and ready to go to a meeting. So <laughs> I went and met this. she took me to this house and I met this intuitive and like by the time I left I was just a ball of snot and tears and everything. And but she just told me what was happening in my head. She just explained to me what was going on, why it was going on. But, you know, where I was kind of at right angles to myself. And I started doing some work with her. I started doing some worship with her and some training with her. And somewhere in that, my own kind of intuition got switched on, which I really wasn't too keen about because I'm, I'm from Ireland. You know, we have, we have a long tradition of women with the second sight. It, it's, it can be a tumultuous relationship. It can be a bit unhinged and a bit unbalanced sometimes. So I was like, no, not going down that road. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it wouldn't go away and then all of a sudden people started arriving at my door going oh I hear you can do this thing would you do a reading for me so it just kind of spiraled out of there and then because I read for these people and you know I go okay this is happening in your body or this is happening or this is going on they go okay great now can you help me with that and I'm like no no I'm just doing the reading bit thanks very much and they're like oh no could you that would be really helpful because you know what's wrong with me now so I went off and I trained in shamanism and I trained in tantra and I trained in energy medicine. And that's the way I worked for a long time. I taught for a long time. I saw clients and one-to-ones. And then about probably about five years ago, I wrote this book called Tending to Your Garden. And it was a book for women about the sacredness of the feminine, which was like a combination of shamanism and tantra. And then I had this genius idea that I take this book off around the world. <laughs> and that's right it. Myself and my husband rented our house. Um, went quite literally around the world, 31,000 miles, I think, recoveries. And we were taking this book out of the world and we were going to work our way around. And we felt like, right, totally flat in our arses. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> we did, we worked, and I thought, but it was just, it was always like, is there enough work coming in? There's not enough work coming in. Our, the person who was renting our house, her, she would said she'd love to look out. We ducks and chickens in Ireland. And I said, I will rehome them before we go. She says, no, 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 no. 
she didn't care for them they got killed she wrote off my car she didn't look after the house she didn't look <laughs> so we came back broke me really angry with God going, I thought this is what you wanted me to do. I don't understand. You told me to go off around the world. I was having a complete drop. Our house was just a car crash. Everything was a car crash. And we just kind of went to ground for a while to understand what the hell was all that about. And really it was about loads of things. You know, it was about Vincent, my husband and I are both very independent. So it was about opening to receiving, asking for help, which we were both completely rubbish at. And it was like we got so cracked open, we'd no chance, we like we'd no choice but to soften, which is kind of a little hilarious because we spent four and a half years training in Tantra together about softening and opening <laughs> and receiving. And it took us like going around the world and really having a hard time to actually put that into practice. Um, so when we did that and kind of licked our wounds and got ourselves together again, part of the conversation was do we want to stay in Ireland? Um, because we'd been in different places and our house in Ireland was very old and we did a lot of work. And we thought, you know, love Ireland, really proud of being Irish. But I think we need to be somewhere else for a while. So we set up a set of criteria. So our criteria was we wanted to live somewhere with the Mediterranean climate, wanted to live somewhere where people were connected to the land on which they lived and to the food on which they grew on that land and where there was a sense of community. And through a really interesting series of coincidences, we we'll ended up in the mountains in Southern Italy. <laughs> Here we are, two and a half years later. <laughs> and you've never been there before, had you? Never been there before. No, no. I'd been further north. Like my sister used to live north of Naples. We're south. We're two and a half hours south of Naples. My sister used to live north of Naples. Um, so I'd been up around there. But never down here. Never down here. Right. Barely a word of Italian. <laughs> two dogs, our car. We'd sold our house, sold all our possessions. So we just had the two dogs, the car. Um, ourselves and a few bits like clothes and a few bits and bobs, laptops and things in the car. Yeah. And that was two and a half years ago. <laughs> two and a half years ago and haven't left yet. <laughs> <laughs> so your whole life changed and you went traveling and all that training in shamanism. So now what do you do? Because you've obviously left your TV career behind. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Um, I do, I do a few things. One, I do one-to-one -one sessions with, and thanks, that's technology. I'm able to work on Skype with clients. So I do a process called Medicine Spiral, which is a six-month training. And I do individual sessions, which are a mix of shamanism and tantra and kind of energy medicine, which I love. And then I, this year, I'm starting back teaching again. So I'm starting 20 February teaching a lovely new workshop called The Medicine Blanket. Because I used to teach a lot in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm kind of grappling with this technology. I've learned this technology now, so I'll be able to do it from the mountain, which is lovely. And then I go back to Ireland in May to actually teach in person. So I'm teaching this lovely six-week um, med medicine blanket workshop, which really a lot of my clients have a similar, a similar thread, like just kind of a bad pun, but at the moment, which is they're in. They all seem to be in transition. So. You know, they've been kind of doing something for a long time. So maybe they were minding kids for a long time. Maybe they had a particular career for a long time. Maybe they've been living in a country for a particular amount of time. But they know they're getting that nudge from the universe to go, something has to give here, something has to change. And so, but what is that place? Like what is in that transition space? You know, there can be a lot of fear and kind of uncertainty. So the medicine blanket is really the synthesis of the work I've been doing myself for the last two years, which is, when I was out in the world, going around with my book, it was very much yang energy. It was very much masculine, going out there, you know, kind of doing the hustle. And then when I was here, I started spiraling in again, back into yin energy. So this workshop is really a journey through yin. It's a journey through the feminine, it's just spiral in. So if you think of a, the reason it's called your medicine blanket is, if you think of a loom, there's, you know, there's two sets of threads on, on the loom. So the ones, down, you know, are called the warp, and they therefore give it, they therefore give the blanket or the material that you're weaving its strength, its, its integrity. And then you have the weave that goes across, which is the color and the texture. So part of this workshop is not, we're not going to physically make blankets, but we're going to energetically figure out what is the warp threads of your being, what gives you your integrity, what gives you your strength, and then what is the weave threads, which is what's your color, what's your own particular kind of magic, what are your gifts, what are your offerings. So your medicine blanket. 
when we're finished, hopefully you'll have a real sense of what is your medicine? What is the medicine you offer yourself and you offer the world? So we're going to play. We're going to play with storytelling and feminine archetypes and some shadow work and some process work. So it'll, it'll be fun, but it's a, it's a spiraling. When does that begin? 20th February. And that's all online? All online. So people can apply via your website? Yeah, if they go to my website, katherinemaguire.com, there's a page there, uh, Weaving Your Medicine Blanket, and you can check it out. Just send me an email for an application form or to say hello or if you have any questions. Yeah, love to chat to you about it. <laughs> why do you, why necessarily a medicine blanket? I know it's, um, it's a course for women, isn't it? Do you feel yes. like we've lost our blankets? <laughs> or we've Med hidden them? Hidden them? I think both, actually. I think both. The reason the medicine blanket... For me, a medicine blanket is that physical manifestation of, you know, in times of old, if you're a medicine woman, your blanket would have had particular symbols on it, particular colors, which represented you. And I think a blanket for me, it, it's, you know, it keeps you warm on a cold evening. It's nurturing. You wrap it around you just to, you know, when you want comfort, it's almost like a baby. You know the way you'd wrap a baby. Sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit frazzled and my nervous system's a bit frazzled, I'll just literally wrap you know, a wrap or a blanket around me kind of tight just to kind of mind my kidneys, my heart, and my stomach and things like that sense of security. So I think if we have a sense of our medicine blanket, we have a sense of ourselves, but also it's a touchstone for when we're feeling wobbly ourselves. It's like, okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Let me remember me. And then I think, I think often, and I know I've done this myself, we kind of look outside of ourselves for our reference points, you know? Mm -hmm. So the medicine blanket is by kind of holding your energy in and being more contained and kind of sitting with yourself. It's very easy to look outside or go outside or source from someone outside here. But what about to sit with yourself? And I think, yeah, sometimes, I think, sometimes it's just hard to be me. And I don't mean me personally. Yes, it is hard to be me personally sometimes. But like <laughs> individual person, you know, the more I talk to women, they're kind of like, you know, what if people don't like me? What if they don't accept me? What if I'm not good enough? If I'm not good enough as a mother? If I'm not good enough as a, you know, accountant, as a daughter, as a husband, as a girlfriend, whatever. So I think sometimes we try too hard to be something else because we want to be good enough or we want approval or we want to fit into that box of the ordinary. Um, but it doesn't serve us well in the long run because we, we distance ourselves from ourselves and then it gets, then we get into trouble. So if you're kind of, if you're feeling that kind of pressure of being in your ordinary life, then the medicine blanket could be like the first gentle step to really uncovering what your unordinary <laughs> should be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it is like, for me, you know, there's a few people who just create a nursery space, create a restorative space and create a space where you can remember your sense of self. So it's not, you know, we do some beautiful work and we do some deep work, but it's not going to be harsh, you know, and I'm really conscious about that because I've done the hard way myself in my own life quite a lot and I'm past it. I'm over it. I've done it, learned a lot, but I really, at the, and I don't know if it's to my age. I don't know where it's to, I am my own journey, but really where I'm at is, to do that beautiful piece of work and do some really beautiful, you know, inner work, but in a, you know, a nurturing way, in a restorative way. And, you know, to give us the space to remember the essence of who we are instead of cracking ourselves wide open with a chisel and a hammer, you know, and going, and going oh, what's in there? I'll have a look. Just to take an easier way. And I've done the chisel and hammer, so I can say that, you know, I can say that. But it's just to, yeah, just a gentler way to kind of pick through the threads of who we are, you know. Right, and you're taking just limited numbers, so you have to 30, apply. Yeah, places for 13 women, and I have about three places left. And there's some gorgeous women coming, women from Germany and Ireland, England, Australia, South America. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe California. So it's a beautiful, beautiful bunch of women. And I was saying to one of the women who was talking to me about it during the week, I was saying, you know, they're women who've all got mileage under their belt. <laughs> so it's not, and not necessarily in years, but just in life experience, you know, they've kind of, they've got a bit of mileage and now they're like, okay, what was all that about? And what's next? So I think part of the magic and part of the medicine will be the medicine of each woman of what she brings to the circle. You know, and I think for me, that's really exciting because 
I don't know what that'll be. So it's, it's like a, a, a treasure hunt, you know, to see what pops out over the six weeks, which is lovely. Sounds fantastic. So go to katherinemaguire.com, get your application form for your medicine blanket. And if you don't manage to get on this time, you're going to be in Ireland live okay. workshopping in, in May. Ireland. Yes, Wise Woman Weekend in Drum Hair in Leitrim in Ireland, which is a gorgeous part of Ireland. So that app is wisewoman.ie, I believe, if you want to have a look at that. But that's a whole weekend of women's workshops and ceremony and, yeah, time in nature. Very nice. Very nice. If we go back to your old, ordinary life and to where you are now on the mountain, how does it feel now compared to then? Oh, so different. So different. I feel, in lots of ways, I feel like I've come full circle in that I come back to the kid I used to be when I used to go out for the cows with my dad in the morning. So like, I feel her more, you know? And I know my husband says like, I sing more and I kind of, you know, laugh more now. So like, I found that, I found my joy again. You know, I lost it for a long time. Um, so in one sense, it's full circle and I'm back around to myself in some ways. But in other ways, it's really different. And I'm very, I don't have it 100%, but I'm a lot less interested in what people think about me. I'm more interested in what I think about myself. And more, it's, it's like more open in my being and less constricted. I, bet, I guess that's the, the biggest feeling. It's like there's, there's a sense of freedom and openness in my being, but before I've been kind of, yeah, just quite tight in myself and kind of quite, not guarded, but withdrawn, I think. You know, so there, there is a freeness and an openness and it's just, a, it's like there's air, it's like I can breathe, you know, where before I always kind of felt like I was gasping for breath. What advice could you give someone who is on that kind of, that, that edge of just going out of their constraining box? <laughs> oh, be gentle with yourself. Be really gentle with yourself. That's the first thing I'd say. And... Probably the advice I give them is the advice that was given to me by one of my shaman teachers a long time ago, which was she who is shaman for herself is a fool, which I know is hard advice, but don't try and do it on your own. Get some help. Just lean out and get some help. And that can be really the hard part because I definitely see a lot of my clients, you know, they obviously, you know, their energy is similar to mine, but like they would be the independent types. Often they're the one who looks after loads of other people, be it their family, be it their colleagues be it their employees so get some help don't try and do it on your own and get someone you know someone you trust and someone might be someone you know you know it could be a counselor it could be a therapist it could be an energy healer but someone kind of to hold your hand to walk with you for that duration of the transition until you kind of feel less wobbly in your own um just in your own being and kind of you know kind of feel steady in your legs to walk yourself so i'd say be really gentle and get some help and what do you think would happen to our world that we live in if everyone sort of embraced their own quiet rebellion? Oh, I live for this day, Linda. I, <laughs> I think, you know, or I feel and I hope, I really hope, you know. Um, obviously, I grew up on a farm and the earth's really, really just a big part of my life and that connection to the earth and how we treat the earth. And I feel that, yeah, for me, that we come back to a state of balance and then a state of harmony within ourselves and within relation to the earth, you know? So, yeah, if we can embrace that, you know, that rebellion inside ourselves, just, I think we get more joyous, less stressed. I think we show up fully as ourselves in the world, which is the most any of us can ask of ourselves. You know, I think our relationships get better. Like when I think of the old me, um, you know, I've, you know, my first husband and I divorced and I married again. When I think of how uptight and how stressed I was and how I just tormented him because I was tormented in myself, you know. Um, and the things you do, you know, you know, we buy stuff to, when we're not feeling great. We just consume, consume, consume. But if we consume, it all has to come from the earth, you know. Um, like after I separated <laughs> from my husband, I went out and bought a 40,000 euro car because I didn't feel safe. 
you know, if I'd have spent a thousand euros on counselling, I would have felt safe. But instead, I bought this big car because I was I was driving down a motorway one day, and the wind blew, and my little car, my little Citroen, um, got kind of blown a bit. And I was like, oh, I don't feel safe. I, and I, I'd moved, and I was going to be driving this road all the time. I was like, oh, I need a better car that's solid on this road because this road's prone to wind. It was nothing to do with the car, and it was nothing to do with wind. I later found out. Um, it was because I didn't feel safe in myself. So I think if we embrace that, you know, inner sense of who we are, we save a lot of time and energy and money doing things that are not us. And that has a knock on relationship with our, or knock on effect with our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with all the people in our lives and our relationship with the earth. So everybody wins, everybody wins. So just be brave, get out of the box, have your own quiet rebellion, find someone to guide you through it, and the world's going to be an amazing, beautiful place. <laughs> well, I hope so, I hope so, and I know that sounds really naive, I know that sounds really naive, but what choice do we have? You know, what we're doing is not working, so why not try a different way? Really try a different way. And, do, and have a sense of humour about it, and have a sense of curiosity about it. Like, you know, when I think of some of the things I did when I was younger, <laughs> I can go two ways. I can have like just massive guilt and shame going, oh my good God, why did I do that? But that just stops me from showing up in the world. Or I can go, you are young, you didn't know better, you're older now, Kate, you know better, get on with it. And just, you know, little nod to that older version of me and kind of go, okay, but at least, you know, she did what she did, but at least she did something. You know, so I think you yeah, have a bit of a sense of humor about it. And don't let your past, don't carry the weight of your past, you know, and have it stop you from creating your future, really. Beautiful words <laughs> <laughs> and great advice. Well, I think that's it, actually. I think our time is up, but thank you so much. And people, don't forget, go and check out Catherine's website at catherinemaguire.com to check out her medicine blanket workshop. And if you're interested in... A longer term one-on-one -on -one coaching then she's got her medicine spiral which is awesome so thank you so much for being with me today on a quiet rebellion oh such a pleasure i wish you every every success with it it's amazing well, thank, thank you, you.